We are as a people, inherently and historically, opposed to secret society, opposed to secret oaths, opposed to secret proceedings, secret for secret proceedings. No official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, could interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to, to, deserve to know. To know. Deserve to know. Welcome to Conspiracy Corner Podcast, everyone. This is Abe, your host. It is 4.40 a.m., November 11th, 2021. Um, I had today off, so just been chilling out, fixed some spaghetti. Um, I ain't gonna lie, man, that last shift at work, man, I just kind of rushed out. (laughs) I didn't want my boss to catch me uh, asking me to come in today, you know. Um, knock on wood, I'm doing decent on money and shit and just too much overtime. I just want to sit back and enjoy life for right now. Um, yeah, I got some plans for my birthday. We're going to, uh, Point Pleasant again. Um, my last birthday, we went to Point Pleasant for a day trip to go check out the Mothman Museum and, uh, the Silver Bridge Memorial, where the Silver Bridge fell and all those people died that fateful day. Uh, Christmas shopping. Um, but uh, when we went last time, it was we didn't so much really rush it, but it's like a three, four hour drive there. We hung out for like a couple hours and then drove back. Like this time, man, it's such a long drive. We want to go up there and one of the things we didn't get to check out was the TNT site where like Mothman was actually sighted and stuff. So for my birthday, we're going to go up there, uh, get a cheap motel room. Um, and they actually have like an actual tour. Like, uh, you can hop in a little tour van and go check out the TNT site, which is cool. Um, cause we didn't really want to go look for it cause we didn't want to get lost and, it's a four hour drive there, four hour drive back, and I don't know. It's on private property. We just, we didn't want to get out there and get lost and then just get frustrated and the whole trip we're just like pissed, you know. Um, but yeah, as far as updates, that's about it. I mean, life is good. I sat here, fixed some spaghetti today. Um, me and Sammy watched this Netflix uh a docu-series called The Raincoat Killer, which was pretty cool. It was a South, uh, fuck, South Korean, sorry. South Korean, it was like a serial killer. Uh, I don't know. I like true crime and shit, but um, we'll get on with the show. All right, now, uh, last episode, I felt like uh, it was a little doom and gloom, but I did want to give you guys a little bit of hope. Um, and now this is something along those lines too, of giving just a little grain of hope. Um, I'm, I'm the type, you know, I am a realist. I'm an anarchist. I try not to get too political, but this is somewhat political. It's kind of hard to go down the rabbit hole without touching politics here and there. Um, but for me, being an optimist for the most part like uh slow and steady wins the race and even a small win or even a chance of win a small win can can honestly bring someone up um emotionally or uh give them a little bit of optimism now i don't really realize a lot of stuff man it is hard to keep on top of stuff um oh I do have to pat myself on the back, though. 
I reported on uh, Joe Biden's daughter, Ashley Biden, her diary, like, several months ago. And I'm not happy for it, but Project Veritas, uh, they got the dude who, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he got his door kicked in by the FBI by for reporting on it. Um, basically, they stormed in looking for Ashley Biden's diary and... That's twice within the past couple months that I've reported on something and then everyone else starts reporting on it like a month later or two months later. <laughs> so I do have to say, stay tuned. I mean, when I get this info, I share it, you know, and uh, I have to say I'm a little bit proud of myself. That's twice now with uh, Fauci's weird experiments and Ashley Biden's diary. I reported on this shit months ago and it's just now coming to light. But uh, it is hard, I do have to say, to keep up with everything, and sometimes stuff flies under the radar. But um, my brother had texted me the other day and was like, hey, did you see Joe Biden's face in impeachment? I'm like, wait, what? Um, which it is a step in the right direction. Now that gets to the point of, I responded with, okay, so what happens if he gets impeached? Like, it would just go to Kamala. You know, um, that's no better, you know, but, uh, I do have to say this though, and I might get people mad, but I actually wanted Obama to get office just so I never had to hear any black person ever say there was never a black president. I know that sounds fucked up and it sounds evil, but just so it, I don't have to ever hear that again. So then Obama gets in, and I kid you not, um, and I'm trying to not sound racist, but in the mainstream media, they were like, oh, he's not black enough. He's only half black. It doesn't count as the first black male to become president. It's like, dude, just give me this chance to just not hear any more of this liberal fucking bullshit. You got your black president. Now, I don't want to ever hear about how there was never a black president again. Well, he's not black enough. He's only part black. I guess his mama's white or something. Now, I've delved into the whole Barry Santiago rabbit hole, how his mom might have been a sex kitten, CIA, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, yeah, that's even if his birth certificates, even if he was born here. I mean, I've heard the craziest shit, too, that he was Osama bin Laden. I'm like, nothing would surprise me, but I don't know. It's it's hard. I'm not going to report on anything, but unless I know in my heart of hearts that it's true. Or, well, or I'll even say, I'll report on crazy shit, but I'll say, hey, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just reporting on it. I'm not saying I believe this, but... There's something weird going on, you know. But uh, I wanted Hillary to win. Because, uh, for one, she was I was really big into aliens at the time. And I wanted to... She was looking into it. She was kind of like the alien president that was going to come to be. But, honestly, another reason I wanted her to win was so I never had to hear a feminist go, Well, there's never been a female president. There you go. Shut up for the rest of my life. Here you go. You had it. You got it. There you go. Shut up. I don't ever want to hear about it again. It was almost spite that I wanted Obama and Hillary to win just so I would never have to hear from the black community. There's never been a black president and I'd never have to hear from females or feminists that there's never been a female president. I wanted them to win just out of spite just so I never have to hear that being brought up ever again. So, but yeah. So apparently there's a bill, and this is actually official documents, man. This is uh, Congress here, man. Congress.gov. Um, I'm going to go through it and read it with you all. Uh, it's a bill for impeaching Biden, and it slipped through the cracks. Um, I never noticed it, or I just didn't care and just didn't pay attention, or I was too busy to report on it, but that's what we're reporting on today. So this is H. Res H. Res. Fifty seven, impeaching Joseph R. Biden, 
um, President of the United States for abuse of power by enabling bribery and other high crimes and misdemeanors. Now, like I said, this is from Congress.gov, so it's official. This is the text for H.Res.57, 117th Congress, 2021 to 2022, so this is fairly new. This is the document here. 117th Congress, first session, H.Res.57, impeaching jo Joseph R. Biden, President of the United States, for abuse of power by enabling bribery and other high crimes and misdemeanors. In the House of Representatives, January 21st, 2021. So, Mrs. Green of Georgia submitted the following resolution, which was referred to Committee on Judiciary. Resolution. Impeaching Joseph R. Biden, President of the United States, for abuse of power by enabling bribery and other high crimes and misdemeanors. Resolved that Joseph Robinette Biden, President of the United States, is impeached for abuse of power by enabling bribery and other high crimes and misdemeanors. That the following article of impeachment be exhibited to the United States Senate. So this says it's resolved that he's to be impeached. I'll be damned. You don't hear the mainstream talking about this ship. You can look it up, man. This is congress.gov. Article of impeachment exhibited by the House of Representatives of the United States of America in the name of itself and of the people of the United States of America, Joseph Robinette Biden, President of the United States of America, in maintenance and support of its impeachment against him for power, abuse of power and enabling bribery and other high crimes and misdemeanors. Um... Article 1, so I don't know, I mean, it takes, I guess it takes a minute for this shit to go through is the only thing I can guess, unless I'm reading this wrong. Article 1, abuse of power, the Constitution provides that the House of Representatives, quote, shall have the sole power of impeachment, and that the President shall be removed from office on impeachment for conviction of treason, <coughs> bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Now, I know conviction of treason, that can be death penalty. In his conduct as the former vice president and current president of the United States in the violation of his constitutional oath, faithfully to execute the offices of the vice presidency and the president of the United States to the best of his ability, preserve, protect, defend the Constitution of the United States, and in violation of his constitutional duty to take care of the laws that be faithfully executed. Joseph Robinette Biden abused the power of the office of vice president, enabling bribery and other high crimes and misdemeanors by allowing his son to influence the domestic policy of a foreign nation and accept various benefits, including financial compensation from foreign nationals in exchange for certain favors. So talking about Hunter, I'm assuming, um, his Hunter had some sketchy shit going on with China and uh, I believe Ukraine, man. Um, it's been a minute since I've caught up on it, brushed up on it, but uh, I believe it's Ukraine. As Vice President Joseph Biden was the senior Obama administration official overseeing anti-corruption efforts in Ukraine. Hence, any illegal activity involving corruption conducted by Hunter Biden within or in relation to Ukraine would fall under the purview, so yeah, I was right, uh, Ukraine, purview of the office of Vice President Biden and the Obama State Department's anti-corruption efforts. In fact, many State Department officials within the Obama administration repeatedly registered reservations about Hunter Biden's role on the board of a corrupt company. Thus, any instances of corruption on behalf of Hunter Biden via his role as a board member of the Ukrainian-operated Burisma Energy Firm were either not investigated or covered up. The evidence of widespread knowledge, corruption, and collusion on behalf of the Biden family with foreign nationals is clear and compelling. Among other examples, it has been materially demonstrated that one, according to the U.S. Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Government, uh, Governmental Affairs and the U.S. Senate Committee on the Finance the Vice President's office and State Department officials were aware but ignored concerns relating to Hunter Biden's role on the board of the Ukrainian-based natural gas company. 
hereafter Burisma. 2. According to the same sources, Hunter Biden and his family's financial transactions with Ukrainian, Russian, Kazakh, and Chinese nationals raised criminal concerns and extortion threats. 3. In early 2015, the former acting deputy chief of the mission of the U.S. Embassy of Kyiv, Ukraine, George Kent, raised concerns to officials in Vice President Joe Biden's office about the perception of a conflict of interest with the respect to Hunter Biden's role on the Burisma's board. Kent concerns whether Kent concerns whether, went unaddressed, and in September 2016, he emphasized in an email to his colleagues, quote, Furthermore, the presence of Hunter Biden on the Burisma board was very awkward for all U.S. officials pushing an anti-corruption -corru agenda in Ukraine. So this is going back to, yeah, Ukrainian gas deals and shit. Four, in October 2015, Senator State Department Official Amos Hochstein raised concerns with Vice President Biden as well with Hunter Biden that Hunter Biden's position on Burisma's board enabled Russian disinformation efforts and risked undermining U.S. policy in Ukraine. Vice President Biden and did not resolve this conflict of interest. Instead, he enabled it. Yeah, sounds about right. Number five, in addition to the over $4 million paid by Burisma for Hunter Biden's board membership, Hunter Biden and his family received millions of dollars from foreign nationals with questionable backgrounds. Specifically, the ongoing FBI investigation into Hunter Biden's laptop revealed that Hunter received a 2.8 carat diamond gift from a high-ranking Chinese official in 2017. 2.8 carat diamond gift. I wonder how much that's worth. If anyone can look that up, you're welcome to hit me up in the comments. But my only concern is the FBI needs to be investigating into more of that cheese pizza on that laptop. I don't give a fuck about the money. I never cared about money. Money's nothing to me. It's the children that I care about. And there's a lot of cheese pizza on that laptop that for some reason, kind of like Anthony Weiner's laptop, no one wants to talk about it. Huh. Hunter Biden told the New Yorker magazine that he, quote, felt uncomfortable receiving the diamond and gave it to other associates. Yeah, I'm sure you just handed over a 2.8 carat diamond over to someone. Oh, I was uncomfortable having it, so I just gave it away. Okay, buddy. Six. Hunter Biden had business associates with Ye Jianming. Founder of CEFC, Chinese Energy Company, uh, Gong Guindong, and other Chinese nationals linked to the Communist government and the People's Liberation Army. <coughs> Those associations resulted in millions of dollars in cash flow. Cash flow. Millions of dollars in cash. There exhibits a vast web of corporate connections and financial transactions between and among the Biden family and the Chinese nationals. I mean, there's a reason we call him Beijing Biden, dude. Excuse me, my phone. Hunt, uh, number seven, Hunter Biden paid non-resident women who were nationals of Russia and other Eastern European countries who appear to be linked to an Eastern European prostitution or human trafficking ring. That's a big one right there. I'm not anti-prostitution. I've always been pro-prostitution. I think that anyone should be able to, as an adult, I reiterate, because I don't want to hear it from some weirdo in the comments section, I'm for prostitution if you're a grown-ass adult. You should be able to sell your body for anything. And it cracks me up, man, that you can do porno and get paid to fuck another human being but the only reason it's not technically prostitution is because there's a camera filming, filming you. So it's considered, quote unquote, art. That's ass backwards. So you're telling me it's basic, porno is basically legal prostitution. The only difference is it's being filmed. That's it. So 
But the whole thing about the human trafficking, that's fucked up. That means someone is being trafficked against their will. You know, I mean, that's common sense. I, I shouldn't have to go on and on about that. You catch my drift. Number eight, in 2016, Ukraine's top anti-corporation corruption prosecution prosecutor, Viktor Shokin, had an active and ongoing investigation into the Burisma and its owner. Mykola Shlavatsky, at the time, Hunter Biden continued to serve on Burisma's board of directors, according to news reports. Then Vice President Biden threatened to withhold $1 billion in United States loans. Loan guarantees if Ukraine's leaders did not dismiss Shokin after that Ukraine parliament fired Shokin. Number nine. Hunter Biden received millions of dollars from foreign sources as a result of business relationships that he built during the period. Sorry, I'm reading documents when his father was vice president of the United States and after the financial transactions, which Hunter engaged in illustrate serious counterintelligence and extortion concerns relating to Hunter Biden and his family. I'm going to light a cigarette. Give me a sec. Number 11. On June 23, 2011, Sean Conlon, a business associate of Hunter Biden, suggested that a $10 billion deal could be stuck, struck in exchange for certain persons, meaning Vice President Biden. This shows deliberately pay for play. Yeah. So, and quid pro quo. The email in full to Hunter Biden from Sean Collin is as follows. So here's the email. This is A. So we have engagement letter. If they get other 10 bonds, they have a face value of 10B, whatever that means. While it is far-fetched, Devon Archer said he talked to his professor and these get traded. We get 10% in fees. We need to get these guys to an event or something where they can uh, get to just formally meet your dad. So pay to play. Yep. Uh, for follow on, they can talk to chief of staff. Let me know how soon you can do that. V brief, whatever that means. If Nagi get that done, we get more bonds to move. So I don't know who Nagi is. Uh, regards your hard working partner in Pasti Positano, Sean. Emphasis added. Number 12, emails between Hunter Biden and his cousin reveal that the president of Hunter's Chinese Communist Party linked firm, Eric Schwerin, uh, repeatedly asked Hunter for an appointment to the, to the Commission for the Pres Preservation of America's Heritage Abroad position he ultimately received the email from hunter to his cousin missy regarding the request for the appointment to the commission is as follows eric asked for one of these an appointment the day after the election in 2008 you know better than me what are real and interesting appointments let's go through the list with steve and see what makes sense I don't know how much 2016 and nepotism plays into it. In all of this, uh, President Biden gravely endangered the security of the United States and its institutions of government. Through blatant nepotism, he enabled his son to influence foreign policy and financially benefit as a result of his role as vice president. He supported his son engaging in collusion with Chinese Communist Party linked Officials, he allowed his son to trade appointments with his father and other higher ranking administration officials in exchange for financial compensation. He permitted his son to take money from Russian oligarchs, including Elena Baterina, the wife of former mayor of Moscow. In so doing, Joseph R. Biden threatened the integrity of the democratic system interfered with peaceful transition of power, and imperiled a coordinate branch of government. He thereby betrayed his trust as former vice president 
and current president to the manifest injury of the people of the United States of America. Wherefore, President Biden, by such conduct, has demonstrated that he will remain a threat to national security, democracy, and the Constitution if allowed to remain in office and has acted in a manner grossly incompatible with self-governance and the rule of law. President Biden thus warrants impeachment and trial, removal from office, and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. So there you have it. Um... I ain't gonna lie, man. I mean, maybe that's why he's not at the White House. I know. Check out Castle Rock. I did the episode on that. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, I will put it in the credits. You can click on it. If you're an audio listener, just go look up the episode Castle Rock. Um, and it'll delve into that. I mean, Biden doesn't have the, the nuclear football as far as I know. And he's not at the White House. I know that for a fact. Ain't nobody at that White House, dude. I'm not a Q-tard, but I don't know what's going on. Um, something weird's going on. I have no idea. But um, let me let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, I'll go ahead and do a little shout out. Oh, I did get my uh, Conspiracy Castle T-shirt today. So go check his channel out. I talked about it on the last episode. Uh, he needs some help right now. I mean, if you guys can just give him some love, you know, something like that. Sub to him, whatever. Uh, too much death going on in the truth community. There's a lot of people dying and there's a lot of people who have family members dying. And just a lot of channels I noticed just going through some negative shit, you know. But um, if you are a visual viewer... And you watch us on YouTube and or BitChute and or YouTube. If you want to listen to us on audio only just to save your battery. Say you're at work and you want to save your battery. The screen goes black. You can listen to us on Breaker, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, Spotify, Anchor. Um, and if you're an audio listener only, like I said, we're on YouTube. Uh, BitChute sometimes. It's hard to upload there. Um, that in the comment section is a cesspool, so I really don't want to get into it. Um, we're trying to get on BitTube um, because I can actually earn cryptocurrency by putting up episodes. And I'm on like episode 153, so I mean, if I get a coin for each episode, that's 153 automatically into my current cryptocurrency account i have zero cryptocurrency so i'm looking forward to get into something like that who knows it might be worth something who knows it might not i don't know but um we're also on huge tube and um yeah that's all she wrote i hope you all have a good day um i hope this was informative uh maybe something will come of it maybe not i have no idea what's going on i just do the best i can to report the news to you guys and report what's going on to you guys hopefully you found some something interesting and let me know y'all have a good day we are as a people inherently and historically opposed to secret society opposed to secret oaths opposed to secret proceedings secret for secret proceedings no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to, to, deserve to, deserve to know. To, 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 to deserve to know.